Recently, I had this idea that AI could probably help me manage the workload of my staff members a lot, a lot better. And yeah, today we're going to take a look at how we can set this up using Airtable, ChatGPT and Make.com. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alex. And what we do on this channel is talk about low code AI, how to AI, low code and everything in between. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So if you have been following the channel for a while, you probably know by now how we work. I'm first gonna demo the solution for you. Then we're gonna go into how the database is set up. And especially for workload management, I think that is the biggest thing. It's not so much the AI making the decisions. That's kind of easy, I guess. But it's really what kind of metrics do we track for our staff members? That was the most difficult thing for me to wrap my head around. So yeah, let's first take a look at how this whole thing works. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump in. And as you can see here, we've got a bunch of projects. Every project has got some client notes. There is a um, project manager field that can get a project manager in. There's the team size. There's the complexity of that project. There's a start date, end date and the status, of course. Now let's take a look at our PM table. This is also quite important. So we have our list of PMs. We have their current workload. So how many hours do they work per week? Their stress level, the total amount of projects that they're managing, because that plays a key role. And also we have our list of skills, plus the projects that they've been assigned. Now, of course, you might say, Alex, where, where are these projects that they've been assigned to? These are just fake numbers. We're just trying to see how the system will behave. So let's jump in into a project and let's get AI to do its thing. And we have this little assigned project manager button over here. And I'm going to make this slightly bigger so that we can see. There we go. Matchmaking in progress and excellent. Now we have an assigned project manager and AI has also given us the reason why it has matched John Robinson for this project. He has leadership skills which align with the client's need for strong leadership in high pressure situations. He has a low current workload relative to other PMs with leadership skills and has a low stress level indicating capacity to take on a new project. Let's actually see that. And yeah, very, very correct, I think. And also he's got quite a few hours actually. And probably compared to the other guy, Nathaniel, who's also got leadership skills, he's got the lowest amount of hours. So yeah, if I was matching it myself, I would probably make the same call. Now let's match the second one, prior experience in the healthcare sector. Now I don't really have any people in my list who've got that kind of experience and it has managed to do Kevin Norman selected due to low current workload and time management skills. Okay, cool. Again, it has chosen probably the least amount of hours also next to Katie Connor. So you can see that it's actually working really well and it's prioritizing the people with the lowest amount of hours first, and then it takes other things into consideration. Without any further ado, let's go take a look at how the database is set up for this thing. So the database is actually quite simple. It could be more complicated, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm just keeping it super, super straightforward. As I've already said, we've got project name, we got our trigger and we're looking at the project table right now. So assign project manager, then we have the PM assignment notes. And this is where we kind of like track a log of all of the um, things that happen behind the scenes, plus the um, AI comments that we get once a PM has been assigned. Then we have our client notes, basically just some client comments about who they're looking for in terms of a PM. Then we have the actual link back to the PM table, very straightforward, assign project manager, link to PMs, super straightforward. We have a simple single select for team size, same thing for complexity, start date, end date, and a status, you know, started, not started, but again, this doesn't really play a major role right now for what we're doing. Then we have PMs. PMs, again, super straightforward, really nothing happening here. All I'm doing is just grouping 
all of my records based on their stress level so that we can see clearly who is AI prioritizing when it's running. Again, in terms of fields, we don't really have much. We have name, current workload, stress levels, high, medium, low, total projects managed, which in theory, you know, you could use a rollup or a count from the projects table to kind of like indicate how many projects they've got right now, if they were matched. I'm just using a simple number. And then also we have their skills, just super straightforward, technical time management, leadership and problem solving. And then the projects that they have been assigned to by AI. So yeah, that's it in terms of database design. Let's now take a look at how I set up the automation behind the scenes. Okay, so if you have been following the channel for a while, you know that we trigger things in Airtable pretty much the same way every single time. So let's jump in into projects and see how we've set this up. So initially, as you already know, we need a triggering checkbox field. So we've got assigned project manager, then we've got our automations and there's one automation in there that is called something like AI assign PM. So create an automation. The trigger here that I'm using is basically based on when in the project table, the assigned project manager is checked. Then we run a script. The script is exactly the same every single time. So it's probably familiar if you've watched any pretty much of our videos. So the script is exactly the same. The only thing that you need to do is just change this little webhook. Just use the one that Make is gonna give you when you set up the automation. Don't forget to create an input variable. The input variable should be exactly as I've set it up right here right now with record ID and also the Airtable record ID value being passed from this little blue plus button. So yeah, don't forget to map that in. Once you're done, press finish editing and don't forget to turn on the automation. And that's it in terms of your trigger. Now, let's take a look at how the make setup is working. Within make, we have the scenario very straightforward. The logic behind it is that in these first few modules here, we're basically just getting the details from the project. We're updating the user by saying, hey, we've just started doing stuff. Yeah, we're basically saying fetching available PMs, right? So that's the little update that you get here. Then we basically get all of our available PMs and we put them into this like little nifty text field. I'll explain this in a sec. And then finally, we give OpenAI the whole deal. We give them our list of PMs. We give them our list of project details and our prompt. So. Yeah, let's see how this whole thing is set up. So initially we have our webhook where essentially all I'm doing is adding the webhook module and I'm getting that little webhook URL that you need to replace later on. Once that is done, I'm actually getting the project details by just mapping the record ID back into module number two, which is just basically getting that project. From there, I'm basically updating the project with fetching available PMs, and I'm also including a date using the now function. Nothing else, simple as that. Once that is done, I'm doing a search records. And the only thing that I'm saying here is that this person should not have any projects assigned to them. Of course, you can use your own kind of filtration over here, but for now, for what I was trying to do, I wanted to make sure that we weren't using any person twice. The next module is just a text aggregator that aggregates the details of that person in such a manner that it basically creates like a nice little text box. And this is how I've set this up. I've got the bundle order position, a dot, the PM record ID, which gives me that REC whatever ID thing. The record ID basically from Airtable for that person. We have their name, their skills, their current workload, their stress levels, total projects managed, all that good stuff about that PM. From there, once that gets aggregated, we just update the project again saying that now we are going into the AI matchmaking process. Again, just including a little now function. Also, we're bringing in the PM notes from the previous module, from module number seven, because we don't want to overwrite our notes, our log. From there, this is the most interesting part of this automation where we are basically setting up OpenAI to do the matchmaking thing and also give us some comments. 
So I'm using the create a completion module. I'm using the GPT-4 turbo model, which is right here, right, right at the top. Here's how my prompt works. So I've got a system role where I'm saying that they're a Savant team manager with 30 years of managing team workloads for software projects. This is my user prompt. So first of all, I give it the list of project managers and their specs and their stats. Then I give it the new project details and I outline all the project's data. Then I give it my desired formatting. So my desired formatting looks like this. I want the PM record ID, a dash, and then the reasons for picking this PM over others. Then I give it its mission. Given the following data about the project managers and their current workload, determine the most suitable project manager, yada, yada, yada. The most important part about this is of course adding this little statement so that AI doesn't add any conversational language and it just provides us with a straight answer. I've also set the temperature to 0.2. So the answer is not gonna be super duper creative. I just want it to be like really focused on the mission. That's basically it in terms of the prompt. Finally, once the prompt has done its thing, I then want to map my responses back. And this is where we need to pay a little bit of attention. So the easy part is of course mapping the project manager. I'm gonna talk about the commentary in a sec, but let's first do this particular part. First of all, I'm splitting the answer that I get here or choices, message, this, the content. I'm splitting the content based on a dash and then pulling in the first part of that, which is the record ID, right? because we, that's what we set up back in module number five in terms of like our response, our desired formatting, right? Over here at the top, uh, when it comes to PM assignment notes, I'm using a replace and most of you might think, oh, Alex, you should, you should just say number two here. That's not really correct. Why? Because I've noticed that sometimes in its response, ChatGPT will give me data with dashes and therefore some of my responses would come kind of like cut off midway and I was like, what is happening? And yeah, I just realized that basically because I was getting the second part and there was another dash somewhere down the line, I wouldn't get the full response about why it chose a certain PM over others. What we have to do is just basically use a replace function over the content, over the full response of ChatGPT, and basically tell it to take that record ID, just like we've done it here, plus a dash, and replace that string record ID plus dash with an empty string. That's all we have to do. And that means that we're cleaning the response. We're just removing that record ID and dash from the response and we will basically get the full response, the full text of the why a certain PM should be used. Then we have basically our PM assignment notes. Well, we do have a dashed line there and then we have the PM assignment notes from module number eight. That's it. There's nothing else in terms of this automation. So that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this particular automation using AI. Let me know down in the comments below if you want me to do something else using AI, some other challenges that you might be having, and I will review them and maybe we'll make a video on some of the most interesting ones. So yeah, that's it from me. Thanks, cheers.